Since ancient times, animals have served as an example of unconditional maternal love, devotion, and selflessness. And undoubtedly, all those qualities that are inherent in animals at an instinctive level should be multiplied in humans. Our smaller animal brothers cannot distinguish good from evil, understand who is right and who is wrong, or make the right or wrong choice. They act according to instincts inherited from their ancestors. Still, it often happens that the actions of seemingly unintelligent animals can touch the hearts of people and give them something to think about. Now, ever since I can remember, I have always disliked life in a big, noisy city. Endless traffic jams, crowds of people, dusty streets. I felt like I was suffocating from the daily bustle of the city. And every time I had a couple of days off, I always tried to get closer to nature, to the lake, or to the nearest park so that at least for a moment I could take a breath of fresh air and reboot. And at night, being exhausted after work, I dream of a small house somewhere far away in a village at the end of the world where all I would hear would be the singing of birds and the rustle of trees. Now one could have thought that I had everything that any 35-year-old man could dream of. A position as a chief financial officer at a bank, a cool car, a beautiful girlfriend, and non-stop partying until morning. But in my heart, I didn't feel happy until my life was turned upside down. The country was going through a crisis and I was laid off. Without money, I became uninteresting to my so-called friends and my beloved girlfriend, who was the first one to abandon me. I barely even left my apartment anymore. But one day, as I was finishing yet another bottle of beer, on my computer, I saw an article about a job on farmland somewhere in the northwest of France. So I had nothing to lose. I thought to myself, why not? I've had enough of the city life. Maybe it's finally time to fulfill my dream of having a house in the countryside. I quickly sold my apartment, packed my suitcase, and set off to my new place of residence. I settled in a remote village, where the air smelled of cow dung. There were only fields around, surrounded by dense forest along the perimeter. The local residents were all engaged in agriculture. They seemed wary of me at first, but they soon accepted me into their community. Since the region was developing, many entrepreneurs chose to start new farms there, providing jobs for the locals. I spent my mornings cleaning the stalls, bringing water, and feeding the cattle. And in the afternoons, I went around a certain area of the forest, clearing out the paths along the way. Poachers were the province's headache, so the forest animals were often at risk of falling into traps set up by them. One always had to be on the alert and carefully looking underfoot. One day, I stepped off my usual path, being immersed in my own thoughts. I slowly walked down this unfamiliar route. Suddenly, the earth vanished beneath my feet and I fell down. When I came to my senses, I realized that I'd rolled into a well-camouflaged pit covered with rags and twigs. Fortunately, getting out of it wasn't difficult, but I had to take a break to calm down. I took my sandwich and my bottle of water out of my backpack, sat down under the nearest tree, and was about to start my lunch when I heard a quiet moan coming from the pit. When I came closer, I saw the wolf curled up in a ball. I was speechless for a moment because I didn't feel comfortable being so close to a predator, but apparently the poor animal had been in there for a long time. The emaciated appearance of the forest predator clearly demonstrated that it had been caught in the trap for at least a couple of days, and without my help, the poor thing would be doomed to die there. I hurried to pull the exhausted wolf out of the pit and give it some water. The predator behaved calmly and didn't show any hostility, as if it had been around people before. Or maybe it felt that I was trying to help. It laid down at my feet and let me scratch it behind the ear. I fed the sandwich to the wolf, cutting it into pieces first, otherwise it would have simply swallowed it in an instant. The animal sat with me for some time, and when it was about to leave, it looked directly into my eyes, and then wandered into the bushes, staggering from fatigue. I returned home, but I couldn't forget the encounter with the wild predator for a long time. 
I didn't even tell anyone about it because they would have considered my story fiction, since people can't really get along with wild animals. Now, it had already been months since I'd moved to the village. Honestly, I got used to it very quickly and started loving my new home with all my heart. I felt like I was living on the edge of the earth, having become one with nature and admiring the local landscapes every day. The headaches I used to get back in the city simply disappeared. I slept like a baby and I enjoyed physical labor. I did feel lonely sometimes, but I tried not to make a big deal out of it. And it didn't last all that long, only until I met Samantha. I went to the post office every weekend to send my parents some treats, such as the local cheese and jam for organic berries. One day, as I opened the doors to the post office, I saw an unfamiliar young woman working there. Oh, she's so beautiful. Never noticed her before, I thought to myself. What is she doing here in the middle of nowhere? I timidly approached the woman to register the parcel, and I noticed how she got a bit embarrassed when she saw me. I'm sure we both felt something at that moment, and ever since then, Samantha had my heart, depriving me of my peace of mind. Slowly overcoming our natural shyness, the young woman and I started dating. We talked a lot about everything in the world, the locals and their culture, the peculiarities of working on farmlands, and the richness of these lands. I felt incredibly happy, especially since I'd been deprived of female attention for a long time. A little while later, I proposed to Samantha and we started living together. And two years later, she gave birth to our son. I have never been so happy before. Life went on. I spent my days working while Samantha looked after our son. And in the evenings, we sat down to dinner and enjoyed the time we got to spend together. That was until the time some rich businessman from the capital arrived in the village. He built a farm and bought tractors and livestock, and many people went to work for him. Now everything would have been fine if only the rich man didn't boss everyone and everything around. He was a hunter, and thus he started inventing stories that his cattle were disappearing and that the wolves were to blame for it. He ordered his guys to take their guns, go into the forest, and shoot the local animals. I couldn't stand aside, especially since, as far as I could remember, farmers never complained about predators in this area, and shooting the wolves would mean a violation of the forest ecosystem. One morning, I woke up to the sound of gunshots, so I hurried straight for the woods. I could hear voices and merry laughter coming from the thickets. Clearly, the men were drunk and decided to have fun by arranging a shooting competition. Seeing me, the men tensed up, and the farm's rich owner stepped forward. Look, he's come to tell us about the rules. Why don't you give it a rest? The farm owner began the conversation rudely, aiming the gun at me. Just leave, all right, or I'll have to call the police. You could all go to jail for illegal hunting. There are strict animal protection laws here, and they apply to everyone, regardless of the thickness of the wallet. I didn't have time to finish the rest of the sentence when I got shot in the leg. The gang of poachers instantly scattered in all directions, leaving me wounded to bleed in the middle of the forest. The wound was deep. I couldn't walk. I tore my shirt to shreds and bandaged my leg as best as I could, but the wound was bleeding heavily. And since predators have a very keen sense of smell, I soon found myself surrounded by wolves. They were growling, baring their teeth, getting ready to attack me, so I was already saying goodbye to life in my mind. But suddenly, something strange happened. The leader of the pack growled loudly at the other wolves as if to drive them away all the while looking intently into my eyes. The wolves obeyed the pack leader and left, turning their tails guiltily. And I recognized that look. It was the look of my old friend whom I had once helped. It was the same wolf that I saved in the trap. A few minutes later, I lost consciousness and woke up in the hospital. As it turned out, the local residents heard the shots coming from the forest and called the police. 
The criminals had already been captured before they tried to leave the village. Meanwhile, Samantha felt that something was wrong, so she got help from the kind village people, and together, they found me rather quickly. She said that a howling dog helped them find me, but when they did, they never saw the dog, and only I knew who it was. Fortunately, everyone survived this incident, and our area is no longer in danger of hunters playing with their guns for their own entertainment. As it turns out, sometimes even the most ferocious predator can show more humanity and kindness than people.